So you're a parent and, or a grandparent and you take your child to a nice store and you tell them, don't touch anything, don't break anything, right? And maybe there's a sign over the door that says, anything's broken, it's got to be paid for. And of course, the kid starts playing with the, to- with the stuff, you know. Maybe he t- picks up a, a vase, you know, because when it's expensive, it's called a vase. When it's cheap, it's called a vase. <laughs> and he's playing with it, and whack, smash, he, he breaks it. And the store owner goes there and says, you're going to pay for that. And you say, Johnny or Susie, don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. You show absolute mercy to that child who, who, who through their own fault, broke that, va- that vase. And then that doesn't take you out of the hook, though. Then you have to pay for it, right? To make up for the loss, the damage from that from that sin, in other words. So this is what mercy of God is. Through our parents, our first parents, Adam and Eve, we have, we have original sin. We're, we're in the state of sin until baptized. And then throughout our life, we sin, right? When you sin against God, it's an infinite debt. It's an infinite, infinite offense, offense because God is infinite. But God says, I forgive you and I have mercy on you. In other words, you, you don't owe anything. That is mercy. We don't deserve it. God doesn't, isn't bound to do that. He could have said, justice be served, and, and you're out. You're done. I'm done with the human race. They're all going to hell, right? He could have said that. Justice is, is like that. But mercy goes, against, goes above justice. Because mercy, forgiving the debt of sin comes from love. God wants the best for his creatures, for the people he made. He wants you to live in glory with him for all eternity. And he feels bad if, if, we, if we ruin that for us, for us by our sins. That's why he shows mercy, because he wants the best for us. He loves us truly. And he doesn't even put any conditions on that, on that mercy. Even he took it on himself. He took the punishment on himself. By becoming one of us in Jesus Christ and being able to offer a a fitting sacrifice which would pay back the debt of sin. The debt of sin. So we have to focus on this today especially, Divine Mercy Sunday. That God in his infinite goodness in his ineffable love for us said, I take that off your shoulders. You feel that, wow, the relief of that. That even though you sin or have sinned in the past, God took the punishment for that on himself. That is love. That is love expressed in mercy. So I think we have to let that soak into our hearts and souls. Meditate on that, that God so loved the world that he sent his only son that he would offer himself for us and die on a cross in the most horrible death imaginable. That's why Easter is such an important feast day. Because it's the crowning of Jesus' sacrifice with his conquest of sin and death. He rises from the dead. And we celebrated that all week this week. The octave of Easter, every day is Easter. Well, I forgot to say at the beginning of this homily, Happy Easter, because you still get to say it yet. (laughs) Happy Easter to you. Every Sunday we should say Happy Easter. We know Christ lives, and he has taken the debt of sin on himself And he conquered sin. And he gives us life. True life. True life. And don't be sad, little one. (laughs) Jesus is alive. So let's meditate on that. Let that soak in deep in your heart and soul that you are forgiven. You are redeemed. You're paid for. You're ransomed. All these terms are very apt for what, what happened to us. And so then we... What, 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 what about our lives then? We just accept it, of course, yes. It's unmerited, and I, I'll take it, Lord, you know. But it's, inside your heart should, should start sprouting a spirit of thanksgiving to God. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you for rescuing me from the pit of death, from the fires of hell. Thank you, Lord. That, and that thanksgiving should show itself in your commitment 
to God putting him first in your life because you are redeemed, because you are saved by him. That, that should be the result of your, of your knowledge of God's mercy. You say, thank you, Lord, and you commit yourself to him. Now, when you come to church on Sunday, that's where you do it. That's where you're able to say thank you. Eucharist means thank you to the sacrifice of Christ, which is made present on the altar, the same sacrifice he offered for your sins. You get to take part in it. You get to engage in it right now in first person live right now. And then this, this whole spirit of I'm committing myself to this every week. I'm committing my life to my, to my Lord and God through the church, which is his body, which is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is that vehicle that he, he gives us for our salvation. Deep things you need to think about, I think. On this Divine Mercy Sunday, don't let it pass without you just meditating on where you've been, because everyone's got a story, and some have been in pretty low places. I'm, I'm one of you. I've, you know, sinful life, Right? And then that, that moment of light, that kind of conversion moment or moments, and then this new life you're living now, and then look to the future. How are you going to live it in the future? Are you going to commit yourself to, the God, to God, to Christ in his church? Ask yourself that today. Ask Jesus that. When you receive him in Holy Communion, make a promise to him. Say, thank you, Lord. I promise to give myself to you in confidence and in trust of your mercy. Don't regret, don't, don't look down on your past. Don't look at your past in despair. Always see your past in light of where you are now. You're in a much better place, I'm sure of it. If you're here in church, you're trying your best. And then, then if, you're, if you're not in a good state now, look to the future. Look how you can, you can be. You can be holy, which means you're going to be happy, at peace, content to love God with all your heart and accept his mercy. See, see the whole pa the panoply of your life, the past with all its defects and all the problems you might have had, where you are now, which is hopefully out of that mud and out of that way of life, and then your future, which you're going to be ho even more holy. Don't be afraid to be a saint. Don't be afraid. Christ has conquered sin and death. He offered his life for us. He, he gave it freely. He loves us so much. Shouldn't that move you? Knowing that you're saved from hell, from separation from God, you have a way back to God through Jesus Christ and the church. So be very thankful and live your life. Just, it's just engrossed by the church. The church should be a part of your life. It should, it should be the, 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 the measure of your life. You shouldn't live your life even by the calendar, the secular calendar. You should live it by the church's calendar. This is Easter season. We're, we're celebrating, you know. Sunday every week is the, day, the big day of the week. There's other seasons of the year that we should, we should let, let them soak in and let, let, let your life be a part of it and be, be energized by it. Be full of the Spirit by it. It's so, it's so refreshing if you just dig into it and live it. I can't, I can't stress enough. The secular world has its own way and, it's, and, and usually it's going the wrong direction. Live your life in the church that because we're going to heaven, right? That's where we want to go. So, so very thankful for God's mercy, and let's commit ourselves to him.